Hello everyone, welcome to Maytech. Today we're going to look at replacing the water flow switch on your CO2 laser engraver. Now the water flow switch is here to sense that water is flowing through your CO2 laser bulb. If there's no water flowing through the bulb, the water flow switch will not allow your laser to fire. This water flow switch can fail and cause your laser not to fire even though there is water flowing through the bulb. This is what's happened in my case. As you can see, the hoses on my CO2 laser engraver have a lot of gunk in them. So while I'm replacing the switch, I'm also going to go ahead and replace the hoses as I have a feeling that it's this gunk that has caused my water flow switch to fail. Let's have a quick look at what you need to replace your water flow switch. The first thing you'll want is a multimeter to check to see if your water flow switch is actually failed. You'll need a replacement water flow switch. I got mine off of Amazon. You should also be able to find them on places like eBay. The water flow switch I have has half inch pipe thread on it, so I'm going to need some reducers that go from half inch pipe thread to 3 8 barbed for the size of hose I'll be putting on them. You'll need a soldering gun and some solder, wire strippers and cutters, some shrink tube. Since I'm replacing my tubing, I have some new silicone tubing here, and you'll also want some small zap straps to secure your hosing. I also have this little anchor mount here with a sticky back and I'll be using this to secure the water flow switch to the machine frame. To test to see if your water flow switch has indeed failed, you want to cut the two wires coming off your water flow switch and strip back their ends so you can attach a multimeter to them. After you have attached your multimeter ends to your water flow switch, turn your multimeter to the continuity check. You can then turn on your water pump. If your multimeter beeps, it means your water flow switch is okay. If it doesn't beep, but you can see water flowing through the lines, it means your water flow switch has failed. Now I've already tested mine and I know that it's failed. If you test yours and your multimeter acts like the circuit has closed after you turn on the water flow switch, kind of like touching the two lead ends together, then you know your water flow switch is okay and your problem is somewhere else. Let's start by removing the water flow switch. The first thing I'm going to do is remove the water temperature sensor, which is simply attached to the hose with some electrical tape. I'm then going to pull the tubing off both sides of the water flow switch. Your water flow switch is now free and you can replace it with a new one if that's as far as you're going. I'm of course going to go and replace the rest of my tubing. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove the hosing from the left side on my CO2 laser tube. I'm going to do this by clipping the little zap strap that's holding it on. I'm then going to try to twist the tubing off. Now my tubing seems to be adhered to the glass pretty good, so we're going to go ahead and cut it to get it free. So I'm just going to take an X-Acto knife, run it down the side of the tubing like so, being careful not to damage the glass under it. After I've cut the silicone tubing, it simply pulls off just like that. I'm going to remove the tubing on the right hand side of my bulb in a similar method. Now as I went to test install my new silicone tubing, I noticed that I have a bit of a problem here. My new tubing, which is 3 8 of an inch inner diameter, is actually too loose to fit on the barbed inlet of the CO2 laser tube. This was because the tubing that came with the machine was metric and I only had available to me standard size tubing. To fix this, we're going to need to make a little bit of an adapter here and I'm going to use some 3 8 outer diameter vinyl tubing to make this adapter with. Now as you can see, this vinyl tubing is fairly tight and it's fairly stiff material and it does not want to easily fit onto the inlet. So I'm going to show you a little hack here that makes the vinyl tubing go on much easier. To make your vinyl tubing go on easier, you simply need a glass of hot water and just take the end of the vinyl tubing and let it sit in the hot water for a minute or two. After the hot water has warmed the tubing, you'll find that it slips on much easier, just like so. I'm now going to secure this vinyl tubing into place using a zap strap. I'm going to repeat the same process on the right hand side of the laser engraver, soaking the vinyl tubing in some water to get it to expand and fit on easier. I'm then going to slip it on and secure it into place with a zap strap. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and slip my 3 8 inner diameter silicone tubing on top of my 3 8 outer diameter vinyl tubing. I'm then going to secure the silicone tubing to the vinyl tubing with a hose clamp. Now I've went ahead and cut another section of hose which will go from the other side of the water flow switch to the water pump. When installing your water flow switch, you want to make sure the water flow is going the correct way. On the switch, you'll see an arrow. Mine is on the side panel of the switch. The water needs to be flowing from the water pump to your CO2 laser bulb. Now that I have the water flow switch sitting in the right direction, I'm going to attach the hoses to either side of it, and I'm going to secure these hoses onto the water flow switch using hose clamps. I've went and adhered my sticky back anchor to the back of the machine here and I'm going to go on ahead and attach my water flow switch to the anchor using a zap strap. This will keep it out of the way when you're opening and closing the panel that contains the CO2 laser bulb. Next I'm going to go attach the piece of silicone hosing that I've cut for the right hand side of the CO2 laser bulb. This is the outlet or return tubing. So make sure you cut it to proper length for that. Like the other side, I'm going to secure it to the vinyl tubing with a hose clamp. The next thing I'm going to do is attach the electrical wires for the water flow switch. I've went ahead and already twisted the ends of the wires from the new water flow switch to the ends of the wires coming from the machine that we have cut previously. I've also went ahead and applied flux to these wires to prepare them for soldering. Using my solder gun, I'm going to go ahead and solder these wires together. I'm now going to take the shrink tubing that I had previously placed over the wires and slipped out of the way and place them over the newly soldered connections. To finish this off, I'm going to use a mini torch to shrink the shrink tubing over the connection. Here, I'm going to reattach the water sensor temperature probe back onto the inlet hose using some electrical tape. I've went ahead and turned on my water pump and checked all my hosing connections for leakage and luckily I've found none. So I'm going to go ahead and test to see if the water flow switch is now working properly by hitting the test fire button on my machine. And as you can see, I am getting the pulse through the tube, which means that the water flow switch is working correctly. So we can consider this a successful repair. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please make sure to like it. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and make sure you hit the notification bell if you want to stay up to date on all my latest videos. I also have a whole series on CO2 laser engravers for beginners and I'll link that playlist in the description box below.